everybody, welcome back to another Creo tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the fill bucket tool and all the different options that it has. So as with the fill bucket in any program, it just kind of fills in your selection, right? Or whatever uh, color or whatever is already there. And that, you know, is usually where the fill bucket ends, right? In Creo, we have a bunch of different options to use the fill bucket that can make your life a little easier and you can have some really fun effects with it. So just to start off, there is a fast mode. So if you have a really large uh, space that you're trying to fill in with the color, this is supposed to make it much faster. Obviously this is a small image, so there's virtually no difference in me filling this in. It's just a few seconds, like a millisecond really faster than what it was without it. So the threshold is really going to determine how much of this is going to fill into other colors. So this is pretty solid as it is if I take the liner off. It really isn't too much that it's going to take out or invade into the rest of the color. But if I increase this threshold much larger, so let me actually go back down, you don't see any color difference, but if I go up to the 80, you can see that it has made everything else a little bit more blue. Oops. You can see that. If I undo, you can see the difference. So if you want kind of like a, a nice hue, or let's say you painted something and you realize that maybe the lighting effect that you're looking for needs to have a warmer tone overall. So you can say, okay, let's get uh, like a red or orange in here. This looks good. And we'll just kind of might be a little much. <laughs> Let's see. Let's turn this down a little bit. Okay, not the best example, but you can see that you can have an uh, overall more warmer tone with the colors that you pick. So this doesn't look very green but it has enough of a dark yellow into it where if I wanted to just focus on uh, these snakes, I could just select them and fill that threshold in there and it doesn't quite fill in the whole thing, right? Let's try a little bit more red in here. There we go. So this has a little bit of a warmer tone. If I just focused on her dress and I let that kind of slowly spread out, or that threshold's increased. So now she overall has a warmer tone. So if I went and shaded this, I could put a sun in here, like a sunset a scene, and she could already have that nice warm hue on her. Okay, the next is the grow selection. So right now at zero, obviously we fill this in, it only fills in that part, right? The solid color that I already have. If I want to expand that, let's say I want it to go kind of out of the clothing, or even just her skin, maybe I want her to kind of glow a little bit. I'm going to actually take this and make that a little brighter. I now have, for this part here, because it's blocked off by these colors here, the grow selection has increased by 24 pixels all around this section. So if I take the liner off, oops, I undo that, you can see this is blocked off right here. There's an edge. It does not connect to the rest of it. And I can do that so it connects and then she kind of has a, uh, an outline or a border. This can also be helpful if you're trying to make a border for cutting or um, just a border for anything really. Some people like to put like white borders or colored borders around their illustrations just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. So you can always duplicate the layer and then make the border. So that's one way of doing it. I can just continue that around. And you can see, oops, I just messed that up. And you can see that it's pretty consistent. Even though I selected different areas of those color splotches, it's very consistent at, what was it, 24? Yeah, 24 pixels all around. Even in this little gap here. Probably could fix that. I'd have to go in and manually fix that because it's kind of, doesn't have anything there, but that's fine. For the most part, it's a really nice outline. And then as you can see, if I click again, it'll add another 24 pixels to that selection and make that thicker. It's very simple, very quick and easy. Undo that. Now the same thing can be said for a negative number. 
So at zero, it does it stays within the confines of that color or selection. And expanding it makes it go outside that. So obviously a negative number is gonna go inside. This looks a little funny, but so let's just do the snakes. I'm going to brighten that up a little bit. So you can see I can easily blend this and add like um has like a nice glow effect to it. It's really sloppy here. But it adds like a little bit of shine. Just a little bit of lighting, right? Let's try it on our clothes actually. Maybe I want it to be a little darker in the middle. I don't think that's perfect because of what something I've done. So now I can have some shading right off the bat and just blend that in. So that's pretty nice too. And if I want to take that even further, I can make that a little darker. Keep this at negative 20 and that just keeps going and going until, you know, I don't want to stop. And I can actually make that even more. So let's say that was fine, but I want to make this area darker. But I don't want it to be at 24 pixels, so this is really sloppy. Sorry, guys. But you can see how I got some quick shadows that I could easily go back in and fine tune. It's not perfect, I'm just trying to demonstrate how you could potentially use this. If you wanted to make a multicolored shirt even, you could do that too. So let me actually redo that. So let's go back to the fill bucket. Put this back at zero. If you right click on the number and then type in the number, you can it'll take that value. So let's just say we want her to have a blue shirt. And then we want to have a green. She is green. Make it a little bit more. That looks good. And we can just alternate that. So now, I think that's as, yeah, that's as much as we can do. We can't make that any smaller. So now you've got, you've given her a pretty cool pattern. So if you're doing some really interesting patterns, that's a, you know, nice way to do the color on it. And now we have the feathering radius. So, let's say I want to make this a little brighter, and I'm going to actually feather this about 12, uh, well let's say about 15. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of see that feathering. It has a much softer edge, see, whereas if I didn't have any feathering, I have a very sharp edge. And this is nice, so if you want to add just a nice little effect to add something, maybe you wanted it to glow, or you just needed some extra color somewhere, but you didn't want harsh lines, this is a nice way to do it. It's very subtle, very soft, you know. All right, so then we have fill entire selection. Obviously, this is the whole thing, the whole layer, the whole gosh. Um, maybe you want that, maybe you don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's the same thing as making a new layer and just filling it. Right, so let's say you have multiple layers and you want to have them color coded or have a, a color label. You can go to uh, right click, go to properties, you can choose a color or you can just right click and pick one of these. Under tool options, if you go to color labeled layers, you can pick the two. So just so you can see the difference. So if I only select or fill in the line art, you can see I have a bunch of white spaces, right? Because the line art's not perfect, there are some gaps. And if I go back to the color layer and fill it in, I mean, I still have some um, artifacting because I didn't fill it in all the way, but it's not the same. It's it's better, right? But if I go to all color, la color labeled layers, and I select the green and the pink, actually, let's just do the, the green, and I'm on here, this is going to match exactly to what the line art has. So it's referencing that. It's kind of like the alpha inheritance. It's kind of inheriting um, that information to fill in the area. And if I take that off, see, no, see, let's take that off. And I fill that in again. Oops. Current layer. You can see that there's no artifacting around the line art. If I turn this on for the pink and I go to the green layer, it's going to reference everything from this layer. 
So if I undo that, oops, and I turn to current layer, and I fill that in, actually let's go back and undo. It just acts like, you can see that I um, filled in the line art layer and there's still those gaps. But if I turn this on again, with the pink, it fills in the whole thing because it's basically copying the exact same area that the um, white is on the other layer. So if you want to kind of mimic a previous color, that's how you can do it. Next thing you can do is use a pattern. So you can kind of rotate that pattern, you can scale it up. So right now I have this cloth pattern. I'm going to do something different so we can kind of see it better. Do the diamonds and we'll just put that on our skin. Oops, wrong layer. Go back to here. There we go. So you can see that and let's say you want to scale it up. So as you can see, I've made this the pattern much bigger. If I don't like that, I can go smaller. And she's got smaller little stars on her. And if I want to rotate that a little bit more, let's say I want to do 180. So now I have diamonds. I mean, they were kind of diamonds before, but these are more patterned to be like diamonds. This is a nice way to get uh, a pattern to work for you a little easier without having to go and adjust the pattern um, manually each time and making a new image and everything like that. You can just make one pattern and be like, you know what, I want to rotate this a little bit. Uh, just change the rotate option in the fill bucket and you basically have the pattern tweaked to what you need to. And if you need to make it bigger, actually add a pattern over a pattern. It doesn't look too good though. There we go. You can keep going and put all these little patterns everywhere. Actually, let's rotate that even more. Let's see. There we go. Now you can see that I have used the same pattern twice in different spots with different rotations and you can it doesn't like try and keep it the same in different areas. So that's pretty cool too. All right, I had to reset my selection settings, but let's select, um, oops, on the wrong layer. All right, so for the selection options, let's click on the shirt here. We're gonna go down to our new paint layer, and we're just gonna, it's a little bit, we're gonna make one line here. Boop, there we go. So as you can see, I have nothing on for the fill bucket. If I do a fill on this, you can see it's basically filling the whole selection anyway, and it's not really taking into consideration that line I made. It's just kind of not sure what to do with it. So if I undo that and I use selection as boundary, it's basically saying this line is going to be the end point and it's not going to fill the whole thing. It's not perfect, so we can actually grow that selection two points, and now it's filled in pretty nicely. So if you need Again, more patterns for the clothes you're making, or you want to just make some quick shading uh, color blocks and then blend it in later, this is a good way to do it. So that way, again, if I don't have this on, I'm going to undo that. It tries to fill in the whole selection, but my grow up still on, so it's taking, uh, getting rid of that line, outer affecting. If I turn this on, it'll fill in whatever I want it to, on either side of that line I made. This is pretty nice. All right, so back to the fill entire selection. If you have this selected, it's just gonna fill in that selection, which is obviously self-explanatory. Obviously you can't use any of the other settings with it. You can still use the, the pattern, but you can't reference other layers. You can't change the threshold or the growth selection. It's just gonna fill that entire selection period. There's no, well, I want just a little bit off, or I want it to grow or shrink that area, it's just, Whatever selection. If I don't have that selected, it's going to fill the whole layer. All right, so that's pretty much it for the paint bucket tool. There's a lot of options in there and a lot of good ways to use this in your artwork, especially for blending color, making some fun colorful patterns, um, using really interesting effects. So if you want things to glow, you can you can make her. Let's see. I can just quickly put. Oops, wrong button. If I shrink this selection and then I blend this probably should lock that transparency all 
right, we're just gonna do the whole thing. But you can see like if she has a nice glowing look to her, which would also be here in the snakes. So we can just adjust the Gaussian blur again. So if I shrink that a little bit more, I could really get a nice glowy effect. Of course, you can do that with just having a, a much softer radius. And just feather it. It looks like they're glowing. So yeah, um, it, if you haven't tried out the paint bucket tool options, I highly recommend doing so. You can save yourself a lot of time and headaches with them and really help speed up your artwork process or just try something different. You know, maybe you never tried the fill bucket tool before and you thought it was kind of lame. Well, it's not lame. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below as always, and I will see you in the next one.